Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready to play a well here. Today, we're finally getting around to the Halloween Lucia character review. A little bit too late because I know her banner is expired. So for anybody that was on the fence after watching this, unfortunately, it will be too late to have pulled her by that point. But at least now it's better late than ever to get some analysis and my thoughts on how you can best make her work and a little bit about the, her attributes. So without delaying any further, jumping into things, we're going to look at the character overview, the base and total stat analysis, some metrics about critical hit and crit avoid, accuracy evasion, all leading up to the report card here, which will be a big focus as we then look at the class and job overview and the abilities to see why I think the things I do with a TMR review, my general thoughts to kind of encapsulate everything and finally capping things off with some ESPA recommendations and weapon optimization as well. So brand new dark unit introduced to the game. They gave her the Grimoire Keeper unique main job here. They also gave her the Black Mage and Thief sub jobs as well. She does equip books and hats, costs and accessories with a move of three, jump of one as a cost 70 unit. One of the cheaper UR costs we've gotten in a little while. She is an exceptionally good cost 70 unit, which is a major deciding factor in her value, if you will. We'll see more of that. Number from a resistance perspective, 15% to missile is her highest, 10% to pierce, then 5% to slash. The strike damage you don't have to worry about, but 0% to magic resistance. That's salvageable, but definitely noteworthy and something to keep in mind. She's also a 97 faith unit, so you will need to look out for potential status uh, ailments. And, and the one she does have resistance is to 50% to poison. Eh, it's okay. Not the greatest one. 50% to stop. That one has its time in place, but kind of going more and more by the wayside as we're getting additional resistances to it. 10% to confusion certainly is nice for a couple characters but overall not the greatest spot for status ailment resistances but could be a lot worse these are definitely ones that you see often enough now as we get into the base stat analysis hp wise she is right in the middle of the pack actually not in a bad starting spot considering she is that you know mage archetype which a lot of people think are a little squishier so she does start off on the higher side there magic wise she is a little more average here she's kind of in that like fourth tier of base magic stat now it's not unsalvageable she can certainly still get like respectable levels of magic stat but she's not nearly going to get the upside that many other characters do for that magic boosting uh espers and equipment and things of that nature now from an agility perspective she's a smidge higher than average nothing too too crazy they end up jipping her a bit on the board so she falls back to earth on the agility side but base agility smidge above average here, nothing too bad dexterity wise you're seeing the first real uh crack in uh, weaknesses if you will she's one of the poorest base dexterity characters in the game this is a significant overall detriment to her kit and we'll see how that kind of affects her in a couple different ways here and then finally the luck stat relatively average start nothing really noteworthy there but overall she's kind of what you'd expect for a 70 cost unit in terms of base stats overall now we reconcile them to the total stats when we include the board stats and the mastery and the mastery abilities things of that nature you get again kind of recapping here middle of the pack for many of these attributes dexterity being the lowest but when we look at the total stats here she really doesn't get a ton extra from her mastery abilities and the board nodes but we look specifically at it in terms of where that all comes from so from the board stats perspective five agility here is definitely on the lower side of things so although her base agility is half decent she just kind of take a step back here from what they do for the board compared to most other characters which gets six to eight and the real good units get 10 from the dexterity perspective they only give her 35 so they really do nothing to make her better she actually gets worse dexterity wise from that perspective and then even the board node the 20 percent magic that she gets because her base magic is lower than many of the others she doesn't get nearly the upside from that total magic stat that they do so she does end up kind of taking a hit here too so all in all she's relatively average in terms of all of these stats that we look at compared to other ur units now let's look at the crit hit and crit avoid which scale directly off dexterity and luck no surprise here she's one of the worst crit hit rate characters in the game like abysmally so and crit avoid rate she ends up falling down just a little bit here so she does have a propensity to get crit hit more so than many of the other top tier characters so although she still ends up doing pretty decent damage the fact that she's not known for any kind of critical hits actually is kind of a small nerf compared to many of the other damage dealing units now we look at accuracy overall again that very low dexterity stat as well as the average luck ends up putting her one of the least accurate characters in the game i'll be honest in my two years of reviewing she might be the least accurate character i've ever reviewed now spoiler alert she does have two 100 hit in her kit which is salvageable enough so although this is a major red flag she does have ways to recover from it it's not the end of the world but as i'll explain in a little bit it's also not ideal either now we look at the evasion non-invade unit the luck stats not high enough obviously deep here don't even worry about it 
Now we get into the report card. When we look at her survivability here through the lens of effective HP and physical and magic, I'm giving her a B plus. This is really her strong point is how sturdy she is. She's got an innate 10 AOE resistance and 10 defense. She definitely skews way higher on the physical EHP perspective. And A, one, and that's out of all damage dealers, she's one of the more bulkier characters against physical damage in the game. So one of her main buffs here is a 7,500 HP shield, which is massive amount of HP, an extra 15 AOE resistance, an extra 15 defense and she has a second buff that gives her protect as well and while that protect is active she also gets an extra 50 percent defense break resistance and she gets another 50 percent from her book so you cannot break her defense as long as she has that protect up so definitely an a tier against physical damage now magic steps back to that c minus no innate spirit no innate magic resistance no ways to boost either so if you're and, and although her hp is decent her her survivability really comes from the extra 7500 from the shield not from her health pool in particular so the effective magic hp definitely sets her back a little bit here now primary stat i'm going b minus here she still does a ton of damage for a variety of reasons obviously primary stats only one you know, part of the damage equation so she gets 40 spirit penetration on the passive the book gives another 20 percent magic resistance penetration and when using her limit break she does have a follow-up attack as well so there are a lot of ways that she still does a lot of damage in a fight which is really her primary purpose it's basically survive and do damage very little utility outside of that now from an agility perspective i'm going c plus here a little misleading though she does have a 12 percent agility passive but not one that i really recommend so if you take that off she does become average straight c for agility so nothing too noteworthy there from an accuracy perspective d minus absolutely horrible but does have the two guaranteed hits one of them is far better than the other one i actually don't like the second one in the least uh, from evasion perspective she's a d as well and movement i'm actually going a b here that same agility 12 percent passive is also a move plus one so there is some upside for some potential movement though i don't recommend it i'll talk about why when we get to the passive on that note the passes i am going a b it's not that they're bad it's that they are relatively average they're the kind that get power crept a little bit as time goes on and as i'll explain in the rationale they don't really give her as much upside as many of the other characters do for some of those same passives now the counter abilities i am going an a she's got one that is exceptionally good for the build if you will for what she wants to do best and the overall kid i'm actually going a minus she's got one job to do and i think she does it pretty well and, and really just dependent upon the meta you're in and how smart you are with your own ai and movement but when properly used the kit works out really well now for an overall grade i'm going to give her a b plus here which might seem surprising given how strong she is at the moment but my gut i actually think she's a b i think she's even a step down and i think we're a little bit of a prisoner of the moment if you will and, and just talking a lot a little bit gumi chose an exceptionally good time to release her where right now we are in a very strong physical damage meta a lot of missile attacks ice obviously is strong for a variety of reasons lightning as an element for the same reasons you know we look at ice too that snow is uh, only weakness is really to magic so when you talk about like countering some of the stronger elements halloween lucia came out at the perfect time and i'm sure everyone vip included is reaping the results of the timing of her release but when you look at overall stats and you look at what she'll do through a variety of other maps and metas she does have some significant deficiencies which don't make her a bad unit they just make her a 70 cost unit and she's an exceptionally good 70 cost unit on that note now moving on to the uh, passive abilities here clandestine reading is the one that's unique to her this is one that i always have equipped the thing with this one it's really good it's just kind of average for many tps at this point where 40 spear penetration is kind of the bare minimum in order to be a damage dealer the 12 defense is also nice but we are seeing increased amounts of defense penetration in the game so although this is a good part of her survivability can be cleaved through rather easily as well but it's definitely one that i have equipped at all times grimoire keeper mastery is the other one i love here it's only a slight percentage drop from magic level one of 30 percent to 24 percent but you also get to 12 percent hp the difference with these two buffs for the magic of 30 and 24 percent is that as we saw the base magic isn't terribly high so although these normally are pretty decent passives they're kind of necessary to have equipped to get her to a respectable magic level but she doesn't really get the same upside that many other characters do thief lore is a decent passive for certain kind of you know movement potential but the one thing about and i'm going to reiterate this the whole time about halloween lucia is that you always want her nearby a bunch of teammates at all times and if you look at the dark cast there's really not any of them that have you know move four or a buff that increases move so my biggest fear of having thief lore on is that halloween lucia would kind of inch ahead of the pack and because dark doesn't have a dedicated tank per se she can leave herself exposed if she's kind of frontlining there for an enemy and acquired ap she's a mage she's really not gonna need that at all 
Now look at the counter abilities. The hidden resistance is the one I really like a lot. 30% chance to proc. Decreases the hate of one, which is the most important thing about this. As I just mentioned, they don't have a dedicated tank. So her ability to reduce the emphasis of, you know, incoming damage on herself and give it more to the other characters that have a maybe a different kind of survivability. Dark Fina with re-raise, Dark Lila with courage and the self-heal, Joker with protect. You know, there's a bunch of different ways the Dark Cast do that. I love that, but also the AoE resistance of 40 for one turn. Again, when you're using her, you really want her in that group so that you can make sure when this counter procs, you can take full advantage of it given that it only lasts for one turn. Now we look at the main job, the buffs. These are two stellar buffs. For a 70 cost unit, these are absolutely incredible. The first one here, I need to re-educate myself on the decrease AP portion of this. But I think my general understanding of it is this will grant you protect. And so long as protect is active, every time you hit someone, they will lose 20 AP for three turns. I think I need to double check that. Regardless, protect itself is really strong. It also gives her the 50% defense debuff resistance, which is uh, pairs fantastically well with the book, which gives her the other 50 to total 100. Now, the Spell of Fortification, also a really good one. This is the teammate buff. It's a 7,500 HP shield for herself, while also giving AoE resistance of 15 and defense of 15 for herself and allies as well. So really, really crucial buff to get right in terms of turn order. Now, we look at the offensive abilities. Deconstruction one, it's okay. I actually have this one disabled on my own. It's the only ability with the cast time on it. A little shorter range. It's a, you know, attack and magic debuff. That's cool, but nothing too crazy. When we look at unhappy ending, this is the first of the two of the 100% hit chance. It reduces the counter chance of the enemy of 100, so I do like that. That's, you know, non-reflexible. But if you are looking at the range and height of it, it is an immensely short range attack. Only range height of one. It's really only a square, two, or three in front of you. And if you do want to maximize the AoE of it, everyone needs to be lined up perfectly. So unhappy ending, although on paper might seem okay, in practice, really hard to execute. Sudden End is also a very, very good ability. This is one of the few AoEs in her kit. It's very forgiving on the range and height. Very good modifier here. It decreases the enemy's defense penetration of by 30. So if they have 40 defense penetration, it reduces it to 10. That's actually really good. The only problem, if you will, is that dark units, with Halloween Lycia being the exception, don't really skew terribly high on the defense side. So although this helps Halloween Lucia survive a lot more by you know reducing the defense penetration of the enemy because of how high hers is, this ability would be a heck of a lot better on a you know, different element that has a more of a high defense tank where your tank would survive longer. Regardless, when you kill an enemy with it, you get 200 CT back. So it is a really good ability to chain. 40 AP, little expensive, nothing too crazy though. And finally, the Toad's Curse, which everyone was super excited for when it first came out. This also reduces the counter chance of 100. It's the other 100% hit chance. Great modifier of 250%. Also has the chance to inflict Toad. Now a little bit limited in that it's another height one ability. It's only got three usages. And so one of the reasons why I think everyone needs to kind of like limit expectations on how good these are is that number one, this and Unhappy Ending are kind of redundant in that they both reduce counter chance. That's a good piece of utility, but again, redundant. Now there's only three casts of each one of these as well. And although it's 100% hit chance, when you talk about the evade units, Almost all of them, even if you one-shot them, have some other kind of survivability. Elena, Violet, both Courage. Locke has re-raise. Ketone's mastery ability gives her Courage when you one-shot her above 70%. Ruin Stern has a barrier to start against all damage types. So even if you are one-shotting someone with the Toad, if you're not killing them, you're going to use those three ability usages very quickly. So going into Evasion, very hard, particularly for second attacks in a Guild War, where this is a good ability, but her accuracy is so bad. Once you run out of this, it's very hard to get in range to use Unhappy Ending otherwise. And although the Toad status effect is kind of fun to think about, I know we make memes about Mish, the fire unit, and like Toad meta, but realistically, that's pretty easily manageable with just a simple trust on passive. If Toad was ever a serious problem for characters to look out for, you could easily throw 25 resistance on a runestone and never have to think about it again. Now we look at the sub job here for Grimoire Keeper. This one's okay, not great. I probably have it equipped personally. Archaic Healing, I like, I don't love. I wish it was a little wider of an AoE and I wish it did not have a cast time. Having cast time to me makes it a lot harder to pull off in terms of moving toward an, uh, an ally and healing them appropriately. Maddening Verse though is a nice one. I don't have it up to show the range and height, but it is one of the other AoEs in our kit. So I do like having the access to it. The only problem is it's that it's another cast time ability. Not the end of the world, but that is something to keep in mind. We look at the sub jobs though, and this is why I prefer the Grimoire Keeper. Black Mage is like one of the worst jobs in the game even with its upgrade where it will uh flare will break magic barrier in the future and i think they did something to its cast time. i just need to double check that but this job is definitely power crap the only upside to this black mage sub job is the drain and flare having typeless magic damage we're in a 
a place where there is a fair amount of dark resistance in the game. If you think of Dark Fina with Enfer Wall buff, the new Trials of Reckoning accessory, Magistral Rod has it on the plus six. There's a lot of dark resistance potential, right? Well, Flare and Drain, because they're typeless, means that they will ignore any dark resistance because they're not dark attacks. So although I don't love this sub job, when you are encountering people that are stacking dark resistance, this is actually a really interesting thing to keep in the back of your mind. And finally, the thief sub job. This to me is really more for PvE where you need to potentially use steel time or steel heart very strategically. Other than that, you're not using the sub job. Now the limit break, this is a good limit break for Halloween Lucia. I don't love it personally. This is the one that has the follow-up attack of Arcane Shot. It's also got a 30% extra hit chance and will absorb 30% of the damage done. That Arcane Shot, it's an 86% and it scales off her magic stat, a typeless damage. So this is a good limit burst for Halloween Lucia's damage output, which is what she's supposed to do. So this is perfect for her. But again, it's not something that has any utility on it. It's not something that helps her teammates do extra damage with it all. So overall, like it's really important for her to kill things and keep her damage up time. But in terms of ranking limit bursts, this is a more selfish one. It's really good. But if you're also relying on it to win your fight, you know, you don't like to be in a spot where you need limit break in order to win your fight. Now we look at the mastery ability. This is actually kind of lackluster. 5% HP is basically nothing. Uh, it's really the 10 AOE resistance, which is really the uh, shining star of the mastery ability here. Now we look at the TMR review. This TMR is S-class TMR at, for PVE. Absolutely game-changing for anything that has a ranking for it for PVE. So Trials of Reckoning high scores, Guild Raid high scores, 2,000 extra max damage for three turns on an AoE for allies is exceptionally good, and it's going to completely change the rankings for what PvE are in the future. This is an absolute S-tier TMR for that reason. Any other usage of it, PvP, really not going to be used at all, so don't worry too much about it. Which brings us finally to the general thoughts. So, in my opinion, probably the best cost 70 unit in the game. Halloween Lilo is close, but even then, she's kind of gone by the wayside in terms of what made her special and so potent. There's a lot to really like about Halloween Lucia in, as a cost 70 unit. She's disgustingly good when moving in a group, and that's really the most important thing I need you to keep in mind, that you get the 25 AoE resistance with the buff, maybe another 40 when, her, when she procs her counter. There's obviously other ways to give AoE resistance with the Esper, with vision cards, things like that. And I'll talk about the Esper in a second here. There's hardly any AoE. AOE barrier break. So if you are worried about a barrier break killing that 7500 HP barrier, just make the move in a group and they're probably not going to focus her. Uh, and unit affinity is her best friend. Now unit affinity is important for everybody, don't get me wrong, but it is crucially important for Halloween Lucia, whereas we saw average agility, horrendously bad dexterity, average to lower luck. So you need her to move with her teammates to get the buffs to agility, luck, and dexterity so that she's not that far behind the other units that you're going against. Not to mention, you never want her caught out of position where she can get hit by a unit attack. Uh, now, super potent with what Dark has for resources and units. As we've seen, Dark as of late, they're kind of this like really like strong, sturdy set of characters that just does damage, like a, like a ton of damage. And Halibut Lucia is exactly that kind of build. She fits in perfectly with what they want to do. Uh, terribly inaccurate though, almost non-salvageable. And I say that because in order to really maximize your accuracy, you do need to use two luck vision cards most of the time. And in order to fit those vision cards into what Dark does currently between the Maidens of the Road vision card and then the Secrets of the Heart vision card, you're gimping the rest of your team really hard just to make sure that her accuracy gets buffed up. So really almost unsalvageable. You're really relying on the 100% hit chance for those hyper evade units. And even B tier evade units, she's going to miss fairly frequently. Like that's how bad the innate accuracy is. Now the defense penetration reduction ability, it's cool. Uh, probably non-optimal with the dark cast as we talked about because the defense levels of your dark cast don't get terribly high but definitely a nice piece of utility there great upside uh, that toad's curse is non-runicable and that she has no cast time on three of her four abilities i do think it's a really big thumbs up for keeping competitive with the current state of the game and then finally the sub jobs really aren't great uh, they make her main job kind of a one-trick pony but as we mentioned the typeless black mage uh, skills are something to keep in mind when people are stacking dark resistance now esper synergy is kind of rounding things off here bahamut is by far and away the best one it's almost not even close magic resistance human killer magic percent up great agility great stats overall spectacular esper when you're trying to fill in other ones though i do like the earth one i can't remember the name at the moment it's killing me but i know it's got the aoe resistance on this esper it's got some of the magic tech nodes as well if you're trying to lean into that aoe build do you think this is a good secondary option i think she was another really good option when you're considering accuracy now ramu and typhon are two of the other honorable mentions for that same reason where you get 20 plus accuracy you get magic attack i just like shiva for the agility which is what gives her the 
the you know step up here over the two of them but realistically Ramu and Typhon in particular also do really well I also think Diabolos is one of the few times here where this is a decent Esper you know you get dark attack up magic attack up magic up slash resistance up there's a lot of good things on the note on the board nodes of Diabolos that could fit into what Halloween Lucy wants to do and then finally, I think Bloody Moon is also another good one when you talk about hedging weaknesses where it's got the accuracy, it's got the spirit, things that you really might want to mitigate for. But overall, it is not a ton outside of these espers. A anything you do is really more resistance or matchup based if you're going for, you know, element resistances or specific agility to get your turn order proper. And finally, the weapon optimization. They released The Diaries of a Mischievous Witch. This is an exceptionally good book. Now, me personally, I'm going for the magic build 100% of the time. The 13 accuracy on the aim and the 13 critical on the crit build, her, she's so bad on the aim and critical already that these values aren't nearly high enough to get any real value out of. So to me, I'm going magic. It gives you the magic attack 15. It's the other 50% defense, debuff resistance, human killer 10. Magic Resistance Penetration of 20, really, really good book. The only other one that I think is maybe worth an honorable mention is the Lunar Tome Plus 6. I know there's also the Velis book, which has the Spirit Penetration on it. I don't really think she needs it, though. Diaries of a Mischievous Witch are still going to do way more damage on average. But Lunar Tome Plus 6, specifically for the aim build here, that it does have 28 accuracy and another 10 on the box stat. So if you are trying to think of a creative way to potentially give her some extra accuracy for some of those B tier and C tier evade units, I think this is a halfway creative way to do it. Obviously you give up a little bit in the way of, of your damage output because of that, but really matchup specific at the end of the day. And that's the Halloween Lucia character review. This is a really exciting character. I'm really happy that Gumi decided to drop her when they did because they really do add a super interesting dynamic to uh, the dark element that kind of existed with Dark Fina a little bit because of people have been using Garvel and Black Rosalina as well. But Halloween Lucia really like above and beyond does way better than both of those dark magic units do. I think it's helped to sustain some balance as well, where we thought we were going to be in an oppressive ice meta, and her presence here does a little bit to mitigate that just because of how durable she is and how weak snow is to magic damage. Either way, props to Gumi. They don't always nail their holiday units. Halloween, they typically hit out of the park though, and Halloween Lucy is no exception to that as well. But thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll talk to y'all soon.